All right. That's it for that docket. Everybody who was there. Oh. We're finished already. Oh man. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I have more work to do with other colleagues in your office. So in person. So I'll, I'm going to head to that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. All righty. I'm going to be at the next family reunion. You you might have to, you know, answer to some, to some things. <laughs> you might not. You show up at my family reunion. <laughs> we shoot. So you go ahead and show up. <laughs> All righty. Thank you. Um, let me take care. All right. Court does call the case of the people versus Javon Williams. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Jonathan Evans, on behalf of the people. Good afternoon, uh, Julia Gaines, Senior Assistant Public Defender, representing Mr. Javon Williams. Mr. Williams, would you please state your name for record? Javon Williams. All right, very good. All right, this is a date and time set for a competency hearing. I believe it's been set at the request of the people. All right. All right. You, the court has reviewed the report that was filed. Excellent. Um, and that is the, the December 12th report. Ms. Gaines, you have a copy of that also. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. And it's really, I guess, the people that are challenging that report or That's questioning correct. that report. All right. Very good. All right. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, at this point in time, um, I guess unless there's an objection to it, I'll just call the, the witness and, and do the direct. If that's okay? No objection. All right. Very good. Give me a call. Doctor, um, All right. Doctor, if you could please come forth to be sworn. All right. You may inquire. Let me have your name. Your current appointment? I am a psychiatrist at the Center for Forensic Psychiatry. And how long have you been so important? I've been in this position for um, a yeah. year. Okay. And have you ever previously testified in cases regarding competency or criminal responsibility? I testified in one competency. Okay. Um, and uh, do you recall whether you were certified as an expert in the field of uh, forensic uh, competency or forensic criminal responsibility in that, in that, uh, in that case? I believe I was certified as an expert in uh, forensic psychiatry. I'm sorry, forensic psychiatry. Um, it's been a long day for me. Uh, and how many times have you completed uh, forensic exams for um, these types of hearings? I've conducted about 170 competency evaluations. Okay. Um, and uh, at, at this point in time, Your Honor, unless there's uh, any objection or part here on the issue, I just need to uh, admit her testimony on the basis of that of an expert. No objection. All right. She's so qualified. Go ahead. In that capacity, uh, uh, working with the Forensic Center, did you have an opportunity to evaluate the defendant, uh, Mr. Javon Williams? Yes, I met with Mr. Williams on two occasions. Okay, and um, did you get any materials ahead of time to uh, to review um, prior to uh, your interview with him? Yes, I received the court orders and the uh, police Okay, um, and you said you met with him twice. Uh, can you tell us? Uh, can you tell us? What medium uh, interviews were done over? They were by Zoom. Okay. Um, did the video impact, um, the, the video interview, did that have any impact on, on your ability to conduct the interview? I don't think that it affected the uh, Okay. Um, and so in your capacity um, uh, of forensic psychiatry, you're, you're obviously familiar with Michigan's competency statute. Yes. Okay, and so fair for me to say that the presumption is that somebody is competent. That's the that's the first part. And then if I get this right, unless because of his or her mental condition is incapable of understanding the nature and object of proceedings or of assist in his defense in a rational manner. That's right. Okay. And then the, the caveat, assist in his defense in a rational manner, that means it is defined as the ability to perform the tasks reasonably necessary for him to perform in the preparation of his defense during his trial. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm talking about it. Oh, okay. Sure, but I... All right. So I want to first move into this area of understanding the nature and object of the proceedings. Um, in your interview, you've got some background information from Mr. Williams, correct? Yes. 
and he indicated to you that he was a graduate from Pioneer High School. Uh, he said that he was um, an 18 student honor roll. Um, he gave you some information about his college, about his uh, college education. Do you recall that? He said he's completed some college. Okay. Um, I think he said like a sophomore year at Eastern and then some community college. I believe that's what he told me. Um, and this is just kind of uh, getting to it. Do you have any thoughts about the truth of those statements, whether they're true or untrue? I don't have information to suggest otherwise. Okay. Um, so in the face of anything else, his self-reporting of that, you have to just take it at its face. Uh, I didn't question what you told me about his education. Um, did you inquire if he had any medical conditions that could affect his ability to participate in the interview? Yes. Is it okay if I refer to him? Yeah, it, it, you obviously prepared a report in this matter, correct? Um, and you had an opportunity to review that? Yes. Um, and would you think that reviewing that report um, today would refresh your recollection for that question? Yes. Then I don't have any objection to. Um, you were viewing the report. If I've got a copy of it, you need a copy, but if you have your own, you're more than welcome to look at it. Excellent. Just let me know um, somehow that you're done reviewing you it. Your memory's been refreshed. Mr. Williams reported history of sports related injuries. He really denied any other significant um, Okay. Um, what about his mental health history? He uh, reported a history of having been psychiatrically hospitalized in the past, although in the case he disagreed with the diagnosis that he received while on the test. Okay. In your interview with him, was there anything that suggested that he was currently, at the time, suffering from any visual or auditory hallucinations? No, he did not appear to be. Um, in terms of his functioning, at that point in time, anything that was of concern while he was in the jail, um, the way that he appeared, um, the way that he spoke. It can be functioning in terms of caring for himself, uh, general stability. He seemed to be generally functioning. Yeah. No, no noticeable tics or anything that seemed to be um, or, or un uncontrolled fidgets. No, no abnormal movements. Okay. And how would you describe his demeanor during your two interviews with him? During the initial interview, the, his aspect was rather guarded. Uh, he was less so, appeared less guarded during the second interview. Okay. His thoughts were well organized and coherent. He was calm and cooperative. He was well spoken. Uh, his Clinical presentation was most notable for what appeared to be delusional, paranoid, and persecutory beliefs. Right. We'll get to that. Just want to back up a little bit. You, you use this term um, guarded. Can you explain to us what that term means to you? Guarded meaning not forthcoming and withholding some information. And you, you, you indicated that there was some concern that he was um, uh, paranoid, having um, thoughts of uh, uh, persecution. Uh, is that, if you want to explain that a little bit more. He made some statements that appeared delusional. Part of that competency standard um, statute is understanding the nature of the charges. Do you believe that he was able to understand what he was charged with? Yes. Okay. Um, he was able to demonstrate to you knowledge of what pleas of guilty versus not guilty were. Um, understand? Do you think that he understood what the, uh, a plea of contest meant? Yes. What about um, not guilty by reason of insanity or pension? Uh, he initially said that he was unfamiliar with that he meant, and I gave an explanation, and in talking about it further, he was able to recall and repeat back what I had told him. So he, was, he demonstrated an ability, at least a basic ability, to retain and recall relevant legal information. 
And you would agree that that's something that is important in participating in, in a court process, demonstrating recall and kind of using that information. That is generally relevant. Did you ask him about um, the nature of plea bargaining? Yes. What about the, the roles of judges, juries, prosecutors, defense attorneys, and witnesses? Yes, he demonstrated a generally good understanding of the roles of key courtroom persons. And what about courtroom procedure? General demonstrated a sufficient ability to understand courtroom procedure. Okay. Um, and based on your interviews, and then he's obviously been in the courtroom just for a little bit here today, but was able to demonstrate courtroom decorum. Now, I think your, if I have this right, your conclusion really turns on to this assist in the defense. Is that right? Um, I think your conclusion was that you were um, um, I think at least when you interviewed him for purposes of the report at that point in time he had not seen the police report, is that right? Okay. But he indicated that was something that he would want to see. Okay. Your conclusion was that, if I get this right, Mr. Williams appeared to, and I'm just quoting, to view evidence or information from the report as favorable, despite that to this examiner, that same information appeared to be unfavorable. Can, can you explain this? So, for example, when I initially asked about the witness that was mentioned in the police report, instruction order. Mr. Williams initially appeared to assume that the construction worker's testimony would help this case. <clears throat> he also referenced text messages that he appeared to believe would support his, his case. But in that in that particular statement, I was I was referring to his he's talking about instruction. Okay. So the the police report obviously details what that quote unquote construction worker says, right? And then he expects, not having read the police report, that the construction worker will testify testify to something different. Initially, that was during the initial interview. Okay. Did that? Did that? Then I'm led to believe that that changed. I read portions of the police report to Mr. Williams, and despite presenting various pieces of evidence from the police report, he did not appear to be. Responding to that information in a rational way. All right. And so this is kind of where I'm having a little bit of my trouble because I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I, I'm trying, I don't know what you're talking about, Doctor. Um, I, I, I don't know that I have enough of, a, of an information. I've obviously read the police report. I'm obviously familiar with what I believe the facts of the case are. But I don't know. What you're taking from him. So I, I just need a little bit more insight to kind of let us in a little bit more. Mr. Williams appeared to be experiencing delusional beliefs about the alleged victim that informs his legal strategy. Even when presented with evidence that would undermine his strategy, he was adamant that, and I'm, I'm hesitating to, because I, I don't want to inappropriately disclose information that, that he told me. Right. Uh, but Mr. Williams was insistent that once he talked about how the victim, uh, the alleged victim, was talking to him, harassing him, 
he would be found, he would he would be uh, he found not guilty, and that it was not possible that a jury or the judge could, in fact, believe the the, the uh, Ms. Farra or the construction worker or the surveillance. Mm -hmm. that, that appeared to be due to his mental condition. We can agree. That someone insisting that they're innocent in the face of overwhelming evidence is not necessarily the basis for incompetency. In this case, in looking at the overall clinical picture, I think his insistence and his inflexibility and his rigidity of thinking was consistent with his experience in the mental condition. Okay. But on a general level, right? If somebody's like, I'm going to be found out guilty, you know, whatever. That, that alone doesn't say well, that person is clearly incompetent. Sure. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you indicated that. I think and we spoke over the phone prior to this hearing. We spoke a little bit today beforehand, correct? Yes. And you indicated that during your interview that there are times that he is he is self protective. Is that right? Yes. What does that term again mean to you? When I say self protective, I mean not disclosing information that could hurt his case. I always tell. Uh, defendants up front that my report goes to the judge and the prosecutor and uh, so to be self-protective would be to not reveal information that could be in the Okay. And there are both psychotic and non-psychotic reasons for somebody to be self-protective. I suppose so, yeah. <clears throat> Um, now, so there's this idea out there, uh, you know, I'll come back to that later, um, so his legal strategy, I think in, in your conclusion, again, is that his legal strategy is based on delusion, therefore he can't assist his attorney because he's asking them to endorse the delusion. I, I may be expounding that a, a, a little bit. Is that, but do I understand that correctly? And he can't rationally assist his attorney. Okay. All right. I've also played for you. I, I also, prior to this hearing, um, gave you, I believe, three um, audio files, correct? Three different jail calls um, between Mr. Williams and a relative. You've had an opportunity to review those ahead of time. Thank you. Your Honor, for the court, um, I'd like to play at least two of those um, jail calls. Any objection? No. All right. Go ahead. Try it again. Okay, I'm getting older. You're going to have to move it closer. <laughs> Put it up here so it can be picked up on my mic. All right. Once we get our new system in, we'll be good. Uh, I'm Larry, how are you? I'm What's going on, babe? I think I'm going to prison. Prison? Mm -hmm. For what? Man, I got into a, a fight with this, uh, this girl who's stalking me. I was in an alleyway and she tried to hit me with a car and the police pretty chased after me. They're trying to charge me with, I don't know, like two or three years in prison because I was wearing a bulletproof vest and uh, they're trying to say that I assaulted her and they're trying to give me like four to five felonies right now. It's just it's almost, you know, like this girl is almost ruined my life. But I just, I don't know what to do. I don't got nobody up here. Everybody else is at dying and out of the state. So I wanted to call and let you know. This might be my last time talking to you. 
So did they give you a lawyer yet? They were trying to give me a, um, a, a public defender, but I was going to try to get my own lawyer. I thought that they're probably better. Yeah, but that costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I, I was just about to get some money from school. I was just about to enroll in the second semester. And I was I was literally handing this woman, who was handing this girl this, this PPO notice to inform her that she was um, on a restraining order and that we have a, a court hearing tomorrow for it. But she recognized who I was and started screaming that she was going to call the police and try to hit me with their car. And it's not funny. I'm really not left. And I'm, I'm really upset that I almost I might have just ruined my chances to gain a name for myself somewhere in society. So right now I'm in the jail. I've been here for a day or two. Um, how are you? The public defender says, not public defender, but William Lawyer, which is, I guess, one of them. But. So I was supposed to speak to someone today. Um, I think I might have a chance to beat the case. I, I think I have a good case argument. You know, I can say I'm working with the mental team. I can say that, yeah, I'm under a lot of stress. This girl's been stalking and harassing me. I can say I was wearing a bulletproof vest for safety means, measures. I've been getting a lot of death threats, whatever. I'm already on probation. I'm in here on a tether. Um, so I don't know what to do. I wanted to just call somebody who I trusted, who I love. I got my phone in here, but um, I haven't been able to get to my cell phone to see if I have the funds for a lawyer. But I just wanted to call and say hello. I don't know my aunt's number. I don't really have many people up here left, so if all goes well, I, I won't be sent to prison. But they said, uh, mm -hmm, they said wearing a bulletproof vest, the, the cop was being a real D, a douchebag. He was trying to say wearing a bulletproof a minimum of two years automatically, and they say, oh, you broke her window, that's felonious assault, you had a, a weapon, and this and that, and what and the other, so... I really don't know what to do. This girl, Who is this? Uh, she's from around Ann Arbor? Yeah, this is an older girl I used, to, I used to mess around with. She's super rich. She owns a little restaurant. She's a spoiled brat, and she didn't know when to say no. She, I tried to get her to leave me alone, but she just kept following me around, stalking, harassing me, claiming that I'm her baby daddy, and and all this one and the other. So I kept saying, come on, let's go get the toast. And she's like, no, I don't want to be around you. But then she's following me around, making threats to have somebody kill me and all this crap. And I'm just like, man, I'm, I'm in school. I'm trying to play for the sports team. I'm trying to enlist in the military. I'm trying to get my life together. And you, you know, using drugs and can't even get your stuff together and want me to father your child, I can't do that without you being on the straight and narrow too. And then this happened yesterday. She almost hit me with the car. So, I mean, I may have blown up. I should have ran for it. I know. But I, I jumped I jumped on her car after she tried to hit me with the car and I took a swing at her. She probably did somebody, say, huh? did somebody use a bullet from that? I mean, I was wearing one because I keep getting these death threats from people. You know, we're going to shoot yes, you. I've not said that before. Yeah. But I'm just like wondering, how long gave you that? So. I bought it a couple years ago. But I, I think the dude was lying. I looked it up. That's not illegal to, to be, to have one of those. Oh. But yeah, if, right now. If it's illegal, why would they sell it? Why would they what? If it's illegal, why would they be selling it? Right. Right. Um, you don't need to have a CCW for one. You don't need a CDL for one. I, I hate calling you every time I'm in trouble. It's like, so stupid. And I was doing no. so good. I was, I'm living with Tammy right now. I haven't even called her and told her I'm in here. 
her daughter works here as one of the nurses we're used to. And I'm just all uh, fed up with all this crap. I really just want to run for it. But yeah. running away from your problems don't make them go away. Nah, that just makes it Anything 
I hope I don't do any jail time. I know I have a violation of probation. I know me and this girl just got into an altercation. But other than that, I think that I will be clear. They might have caught me on camera flushing someone's tire. And they might have me on camera swinging on this girl. But Lord knows that I was trying everything to keep her away from me in the first place. That's yeah. not like, I don't know. I just, I hope that I don't get sent to no jail time. I'm really doing good right now. I'm in school. I'm working. I'm working out. I'm getting bigger and stronger. My mom's not here to push me down. I'm going to pray for it. I got a little bit of money in my, uh, in my wallet, so I might be able to buy some. Long time to call you. Um, okay. I'm sure you, you probably know the process. I can give you my number and stuff. I don't know what my mom does. So. But I got a little bit of money coming right now from school. So hopefully, if this all goes well, I won't be in here for. I, you know, I've never been in jail for more than 90 days. So. You know, I'm sorry. I'm going to skip ahead. He's going to give his badge number in the jail. I'm going to protect that information. It's not all exactly. Right, that's fine. Of course, or right. maybe not, right? And to apologize to her, she might drop. All right, I'm gonna pick it up from here. The charges. I broke her window. I mean, she almost hit me with the car. I take, uh, she almost ran me over with the Cadillac Escalade, and so I jumped out of the way. And I said, "I was, I mean, it was wrong. I could, I could have ran for her." I, I don't know how to do it. Well, what if you had a pending PPO or something, it's mm. probably best that you don't even try to contact her or whatever. But you know. the PPO is her against me, so she can't come into contact with me. Okay. I put a PPO on her because she's okay. been stopping me. So when she saw me in the alleyway, I knocked on her window of this vehicle. I didn't know who she was. And then all of a sudden, I'm standing there wondering, like, is, it, is this you, homegirl? I hope yeah, so. I was, I was like, I wonder, I wonder, I'm wondering. And then all of a sudden, the car backs up, and she comes right back down the alleyway. I don't give a damn. Get out of my life. Like, you think you're smooth? And it was just sounding upset. And that's when I tried to, tried to leave. But then she was like, I'll run you over, Mother F for this. And she tried. And at that point, I, I jumped in her. I'm like, I, I shouldn't have done it, but I swung at her. And I could have ran, but then I broke her window, and then I started running. So, I don't know. I feel bad. Never raise your hand to a woman. Right. Yeah. And when she got a car, she needs a car. Excuse me. Not a problem. Uh, this is, you know, this is not my lifestyle. I, no. I, I, I feel like a caged animal. I, I, I'm not going to make Thank it. you for using Securus. Goodbye. Thank you. Um, doctor, uh, I've talked to you about your findings, um, and I'll just put my card on the table here. Yeah. No, no, I can just make this one thing, please. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Jones. I just did, I wanted to make it clear that. I was only in, I was only not objecting for the purposes of the competency hearing. To these? To this, this to this, to this particular. Exhibit. Of, of the exhibit. Okay, very good. All right. Yeah. That's and, fine. And, 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 yep, that's all, the only purpose that I wanted to, for this hearing. Um, um, doctor, I'm putting my cards on the table here. I, I don't disagree with your conclusion that in essence, the things that he's saying are probably not true, but I come to a different reasoning why. Where you, I believe, say that his beliefs are grounded in delusions, I believe that he's. Objection. Well, I, I think you, you, well, it's argumentative, certainly. As to the conclusions, because what you're posing to the doctor is what may be your feelings. I mean, is there something that you're basing? I can rephrase. Please do. 
I believe you, you've had an opportunity to listen to this phone call, right? Where he, he described that he got into a fight with the girl who was stalking him. He was trying to hand her a PPO. She recognized me. She was going to call the police. And then she tried to hit me with the car, correct? I don't have a word for word transcript, but that sounds like it. Okay. At that point in time, you heard the phone call. He defined his relationship as being one about being the father of the child, uh, prior dating relationship, uh, all those types of things, correct? Okay. Uh, he, in this phone call, uh, admits to breaking her car window, right? Uh, yes. Towards the end of the call, he then says, I didn't know who it was. Um, and he admits to swinging that and breaking her window. You remember that? Like he said, I, I don't, I didn't know who it was. Is this that home girl? Objection, Your Honor. I don't, I don't, I, I would ask that the court, uh, that the court's hearing of the recording screen. So noted, but I guess I'm trying to figure out where we're going with that. Yeah. So you're aware then. I'll try and see if I, without playing the other video, the circumstances in the next jail call from November 7th change drastically, don't they? Yeah, I would object to this. Drastically in what way? I object to this question. At this point, I, I believe it's cumulative to introduce the next tape, if that's what it means. It can't be cumulative if I'm saying that there's a change. <laughs> And it's okay, but 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 hold on, because we're going to get to. I have a doctor who's an expert in forensic psychology, who says she has done her interview with the defendant in this case. That the defendant has said things, and that her conclusion is the basis for what he's saying is something that is delusional. Right. And then uses that on the factors. Okay, fine. As you're going through all of these questions, and you may feel a different way, I may feel a different way, Miss Gaines may feel a different way. On what basis is that <laughs> you're asking the court to make a determination, and I don't see that I'm going to have anything else on the other side. Ultimately, Your Honor, you're the one that makes the determination of whether the defendant is competent or not. That's Oh, I understand what my obligation is. Thank you for pointing out what I do. But what I'm saying is you're asking let me, let me just do it this way. Just hypothetically speaking. The doctor here who's telling me that this individual is making statements that based upon her professional opinion, they are based upon some type of delusional thought. Mm -hmm. You go through your questioning, he then says other things. You may feel that they are different. She has heard the tapes. So wouldn't I first, or the recordings, wouldn't the first thing be as to whether or not hearing those recordings would change her assessment of the defendant's status of, of competency? That would be an op approach, on approach to doing it, yeah. Okay, but what am I doing right now? I'm hearing your view of that. And I'm proposing a theory that he's just making up a on what though? On, I, but but hold on, I have an expert telling me one thing. I have your feeling about something else, and I'm supposed to make my decision. And if I make my decision, let's say I just agree with your feeling, yeah. but I've got expert testimony on the one hand. I'm just supposed to absolutely discount that. I mean, normally, Mr. Emmons, what I'll have is I'll have somebody who's an expert who has made their conclusion. You come in, you may challenge their conclusion. She may then, the doctor may have to admit certain facts that maybe 
judge, and I'm not saying this is the case, that maybe she didn't see, didn't take into consideration, didn't do whatever. Then what I get is I get another expert uh, that says, here's this conclusion, but if you knew this and knew this and knew this, would there then be another conclusion that one would come to? Then I at least have things to choose from. That's, that's correct, Your Honor. And that's, that's an option that we can take. My rationale here is to ask her, based on what I'm going to refer to as the refining of the lie, as evidenced by the jail call, if that does, in fact, change her opinion. And she might agree with me. She might disagree with me. Um, that is it, is it possible that he's malingering? And not only does that give us something to chew upon. Okay, today, but, but, but hold it. Then let's get to it. I don't, I don't know that I need to know what your feelings are for you to ask this doctor about what her opinion of what statements he may be making are. The, the evidence that I'm seeking to introduce, though, I think is important, not just for today's proceeding, but even if you do find the defendant is incompetent but restorable, down the road, this is something that the court should continue to, con to consider. Your Honor, that, so if, if that is the purpose of this hearing, then I completely object. Because this the issue today should only be competency. And this should not be, um, in particular, given that I, I don't think that there's any, um, there's any discussion of a mental, or there's any lack of disputes of mental illness history of my client to then, uh, this hearing should not be something that should be, can be used and then used again and actually the charge that trial of fact if it gets to that point. Because the issue today that we are talking about is very narrowly competency. And um, if that is the purpose of the, um, the, the, inter the entering of the report, it's not whether or not that has altered the um, doctor's opinion, but as simply a way to lay a foundation for a future hearing that they imagine well, because you can be well, wizard can I, can I just say in the 20 some odd years I've been doing this? I I get competing experts. That's what I get. So sometimes when the forensic center says that somebody's competent and the defense doesn't believe that's the case, I have an IME, I have somebody else that's saying, eh, I think this doctor got it wrong. Okay. So again, let's assume just for the sake of argument that the good doctor here got something wrong in what she did. At the end of all of this today, how do I get there? What am I going to have on the other side of her opinion that's going to lead me to dispute what she says? Well, if that's the case, then, Your Honor, you, still, you do have the authority to order an IME. That, I mean, that's something that I don't. It was done. not requested. The, I believe the statute says that the defense, the prosecution, or the court order the IME. I didn't ask for this hearing. You <laughs> asked for the that. hearing. I recognize that, Your Honor. Then why aren't you asking for the IME? Well, I mean, I don't think you can put it on the court to do that. I, 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 I am satisfied as I read the report that this doctor has written. I'm satisfied with the report. You're the one that's not satisfied with it. Right. So why didn't you ask for the IME? I, I, in speaking with the doctor, I believe that Whatever conclusion she's going to come to, if she's going to come to, that it might form a basis that I need to that I might need to consider an IME in the future. I guess I don't understand why we don't have it now. I, I mean, you're challenging her. You're challenging her finding that she has made. Right. I'm saying to you, fine. I don't mind sitting for the hearing listening to what the doctor says, what points you challenge it, but 
at some point, I have to make a finding. And, and, and fair enough. I'm entitled to make the argument that I'm making. And if you come to the... If- no, you're not entitled to waste everybody's time. If you're going to have an IME for me to weigh the differences between what this doctor says and what another, another doctor says based upon other evidence, then fine. But what I'm just seeing here, Mr. Emmons, quite frankly, is a waste of time because I don't see another expert. I don't know how you, I don't know how I get there. And if you're talking about somebody, something further down the road, Ms. Gaines rightfully so is objecting because she's entitled to the finding at this point. I mean, the court's going to stand in recess. All right. All right, we're back on the record in the case of the people versus Williams. Counsel is present. Um, before this matter even proceeds any further, so there's going to have to be a decision made. If the people are challenging this, there has to be something on the other side. Fair enough, Your Honor. I mean, I, I understand. I take the court's point. I, I at least at least ask the court to allow me to ask her. If listening to Joe calls has changed her opinion. Doctor, if you could please take the stand. Doctor, I remind you that you're still under oath. Go ahead, Mr. Evans. So, Doctor, um, again, I supplied you with some other stuff ahead of uh, ahead of this hearing, correct? Is it is it possible that his legal strategy is based on a system of lies and not to lie? Objection, Your Honor. Well, is it possible? Yes, I don't think that's consistent with overall clinical patients, but it's possible. Okay. I, I will overrule the objection. I'll allow the answer. Okay. All right. Nothing else, Your Honor. Ms. Gaines, do you have anything on this witness at this time? No. All right. Doctor, thank you. You may step down. All right. So what the court will do is... And I don't know where the parties want to proceed with this. I mean, if the testimony that I have right now and the court has to make a finding, I'll make the finding. But if there's going to be something else coming forth or either party wish to request that I have something else come forth, I'll entertain that. Um, I'm not, and I just want to make it very clear on the record, I am not, from the court's perspective, ordering an IME. So the court is not going to order one. I will make my finding, or if either party wishes the opportunity to get an IME, I will grant that. But can, we, can we just briefly approach? You may. Be off. Record should reflect we have a bench conference in this case. There has to be a determination, I think, based on what the court is saying, if there's going to be expert testimony on their side. Determination has to be made as to whether or not there's going to be an additional uh, independent medical examination of this defendant. Um, certainly, that can't that decision can't be made tonight. So I'm going to adjourn this comp hearing to January nineteenth, two thousand twenty-three, nine. I'll, I'm going to set this at 9 a.m. Doctor, your presence is not required at the adjourned date. If it's required at a later date, then um, Ms. Gaines will likely be in touch with you that we may require your presence. So I don't want you to think that you have to come back on that day. All right. So I'll adjourn it to that time and then we'll proceed from there. Bond will continue in this case. Thank you. There's nothing else. Thank you. No, we're not. Okay. Second. 14A stands adjourned. You guys can do what you do.